Hello, I'm Jillian. This video on research questions focuses on academic research that's usually conducted in a higher education institution like a college or university. Why a whole video just on research question? Well, the question is the center point, the focal point, the core of the entire research study. Conceptually, it represents what the researcher wants to know or learn and what the researcher believes will make a contribution to the field. And practically, it's the researcher's guide throughout the entire research process, from developing protocols to analyzing data. So that's a lot of responsibility. The question is very important to the success of the study. Before we continue, I should note that some studies have multiple questions, usually in the form of subsidiary or sub-questions. These are often aspects of that main research question that are flushed out and articulated in more detail. In this video, I'm focusing only on that main research question. Now the main question is framed by two lenses, the topic of interest and research theory or methodology. In order for researchers to formulate and articulate that question, they must become knowledgeable on both. Let's start with the topic of interest. This refers to the scholarly conversation that the researcher is interested in and hopes to contribute to with new research. Here are some topic examples from my world. Topics are typically connected to other topics in large subject areas. So defining a topic of interest for a study entails untangling the web that connects topics by setting boundaries on what will be included and what will be excluded. To make and rationalize such decisions, researchers read extensively on that larger subject area. And this can take anywhere from a few weeks to several years. It may be impossible or at least unreasonable to read the entire body of scholarship. So researchers should aim to gain an appreciation for the contributions of key scholars, the geographical, temporal, and thematic scope of the literature, the relevant theories and conceptual and philosophical orientations, and existing research studies. These aspects can help define the topic of interest. So for example, the topic may involve a particular theory or a particular orientation or a particular theme, as in the previous slide. Once the topic is clearly defined, the researcher is able to identify an opportunity for new research within that topic. And this opportunity then becomes the goal of their study. The opportunity is known as the research problem and the goal is known as the research purpose. The word problem should not imply that there's something wrong with the scholarship. Usually it refers to a gap in knowledge or understanding something that remains unclear or has yet to be investigated, maybe a variation or an alternative context. Preparing a literature review on the topic is very helpful in identifying a problem or problems. And you can refer to my video on literature reviews for support in this. Also, it's common for published empirical reports to identify in the conclusion problems that persist, so researchers can get ideas from those reports as well. Here are some examples of how a research problem might be framed. Pause and read through them. The purpose refers to how the new study intends to address the problem and contribute to the existing body of scholarship. Here are some examples of research problems and their corresponding research purposes. Pause for a moment and review them. The purpose leads directly to a research question, which in some cases is simply a re-articulation of that purpose, but in question format. And I'll show some examples of questions that go along with these purposes shortly. So before addressing the other lens on methodology, just a quick review on topic. Read extensively on the broader subject area. 
Define the topic by determining and rationalizing boundaries. Prepare a literature review and identify a research problem and purpose. The methodology is the researcher's theoretical approach to research. This is not the same as methods. Methods are the strategies, the particular strategies that the researcher uses to enact that methodology. So similarly to defining the topic of interest, which requires knowledge of the broader subject area, choosing methodology requires broad knowledge of research theory. Researchers become attracted to methodologies that align with their worldview, meaning their philosophical assumptions, beliefs, biases, and values regarding ontology, the study of reality and truth, epistemology, the study of knowledge, and axiology, the study of values. Worldviews regarding research have traditionally fallen within two philosophical paradigms, positivism and post-positivism, and interpretivism and constructivism. Very simply, positivism and post-positivism state that knowledge is deduced, identified, measured, verified, and generalized, that reality and truth are universal, objective, and independent of human qualities, and that it is possible to separate oneself from the inquiry process so that the inquiry is free of any values and biases that the researcher might hold. Post-positivists are a little less extreme on these views than positivists. They acknowledge that some things cannot be known, cannot be known fully, or cannot be known for certain, that observation is fallible and can be affected by the researcher, and that theory is revisable. Interpretivism and constructivism hold opposite views regarding epistemology, ontology, and axiology. They state that knowledge is induced, created, experienced, described, and transferred, that reality and truth are context-specific, subjective, and socially constructive, and that one's values and biases cannot be separated from the inquiry process and therefore should be acknowledged. As you can imagine, these views lead to quite different ways of approaching research. Positivists and post-positivists tend to use quantitative methodologies that entail measurement, numbers, mathematics, and statistics. These methodologies are experimentation, quasi-experimentation, and correlational and descriptive studies. Interpretivists and constructivists generally use qualitative methodologies that entail words, symbols, artifacts, and images. These methodologies are case study, ethnography, phenomenology, narrative inquiry, and grounded theory. There is an emerging third paradigm that uses both quantitative and qualitative methodologies and data. It's been a challenge to describe that philosophically um, in terms of ontology, epistemology, and axiology. Now, I'm not a philosopher, so I'm gonna let you pursue that if you're interested in that methodology, but please share your knowledge in the comments below. One's worldview isn't the only consideration in selecting methodology. The type of empirical work that has already been conducted on the topic is also informative. Methodology used in a previous study might be repeated in a new context, with alternative conditions, or under different circumstances. Or if the topic has been primarily researched using qualitative methodologies, the researcher might decide on a quantitative approach or the reverse. And if case study has been the common qualitative methodology, then ethnography might be selected or the reverse. So sometimes the research problem identified in a review of the literature is methodological in nature. For example, no studies have attempted to quantify a particular phenomenon. The purpose of the present study will be to do that. A word of caution though, not all methodological gaps will represent viable opportunities for new research. Investigating a particular problem using a particular methodology must be reasonable and justifiable. 
So for example, it would be inappropriate and probably unethical to investigate the professional practices of teachers or the social, emotional, moral behaviors of students using experimentation. Likewise, it would be unfeasible to try and catalog strategies for a nationwide program using narrative inquiry, although experiential stories might be useful as supplementary or secondary data. And finally, it would be ineffective to use ethnography in determining if academic success is related to instructional hours. The methodology in these cases is incompatible with the problem and purpose. And without compatibility between the problem, purpose, and methodology, the study risks incoherence, such that the data and the results will not address the problem or fulfill the stated purpose. Finally, methodological choice is guided and restricted by practical issues, such as available, available resources. This can be time, money, supplies, and human resources, access to participants and the field, and the researcher's skills and previous research experiences. To summarize the methodology lens, learn about research theory, identify your own world view regarding ontology, epistemology, and axiology, assess existing empirical work on your topic, and determine the practical aspects of conducting a study. So the research question is shaped by all of this, and it also should reveal all of this. That's a lot to pack into a question. Here's one of my research questions. How does an elementary level school teacher who prioritizes the moral education of students envision, enact, and reflect on that moral education? So the topic of interest is usually fairly obvious. In this case, it's moral education. The methodology is signaled by the question word. How does or how do and why type questions are qualitative in nature because they necessitate explanations and that requires qualitative data. How many or how much and to what extent questions are quantitative because they necessitate numbers and statistics and measurements and that requires quantitative data. What type questions can be either qualitative or quantitative or mixed method, depending on the problem and purpose of the study? The other aspects of the question define the context and the scope and provide clarity. Because mine was a comprehensive study, I also had sub-questions to flush out in more detail what I was interested in regarding uh, envision, enact, and reflect. Incompatibility can be revealed in the question. So returning to our previous examples of incompatibility, what happens if, what happens when questions are problematic for exploring the professional practices of teachers or the social, emotional, moral behaviors of students because they imply experimentation and that would be inappropriate and unethical. Why questions are unhelpful in cataloging a nationwide program because you don't want explanations if your goal is simply to catalog. And how questions will not address whether instructional hours are related to academic success. Although, once that correlation has been established, how might be an appropriate next step. As promised, here are some examples of research questions that are compatible with the problems and purposes I previously showed. So pause and read through them. In addition to compatibility between the topic, problem, purpose, and methodology, well-crafted and articulated research questions have other qualities. For example, they're focused meaning that they contain all the necessary contextual information. They're clear so that they're free of jargon and most people can understand all of the key words. They're answerable or addressable, so there's methodology that will generate meaningful data. They're unbiased. They don't contain presuppositions or assumptions regarding the data that will be collected. They're ethical, so pursuing the questions will not cause harm to participants or to the researcher. And they're worthwhile, meaning that the knowledge that will be gained from 
from pursuing them is valuable. I hope you can appreciate that being able to articulate a research question that meets all of these criteria requires a good amount of knowledge on both the subject area and research theory. And that's where academic research for me really begins with reading, studying, reflecting, and considering options. In my experience, students who are new to research start formulating research questions too early before they have acquired enough background knowledge. And while these early questions are helpful in guiding the readings, they are rarely qualify as research questions. So my advice is to immerse in the scholarly literature, to learn as much as you can on the subject and on research theory. Let the topic, the problem, the purpose, your worldview, let that all emerge. And then you will be in a very good position to formulate a research question and move forward with your study.